Breaking news out of Ottawa, where a vaccine mandate is coming to the House of Commons. The Board of Internal Economy has ordered that anyone entering House of Commons precinct, and that includes all members of Parliament, will need to be fully vaccinated as of November 22nd, which is the day the 44th Parliament kicks off. Let's bring in CTV News Online politics reporter Rachel Aiello. Rachel, this is a breaking news. I know you're all over it. Let's talk a little bit about what happens with members of Parliament who are not presently vaccinated. Right. So right now, the only exemption that the House of Commons is offering is for folks who have a medical contraindication to getting a COVID-19 vaccine. So that is quite a limited exemption that they are offering. And in the cases of these folks, whether it is MPs or other staff needing to get up into Parliament Hill, uh, they will have to show a recent rapid antigen test that was negative. So do we know how many members of parliament are not vaccinated. It was an issue during the election campaign, uh, particularly with the Conservative Party. Yeah, so I'll tell you what we do know. We do know that all Liberal, NDP and Bloc Quebecois MPs are fully vaccinated. Uh, we do not know how many Conservatives at this point remain unvaccinated. Throughout the campaign, when they were candidates, and now as they are MPs, that party has continued to refuse to say how many of its members still haven't rolled up their sleeves and gotten the COVID-19 vaccine. Obviously, Jennifer, this is going to become very clear very soon. November 22nd mm -hmm. is when this new mandate comes into effect. So if there are still Conservative MPs who have not been vaccinated and do not have a valid medical exemption, they will not be allowed on the grounds of Parliament Hill. The big kind of question mark remaining is what happens with hybrid sittings. So this was the agreement struck during the pandemic that allowed them to dial in remotely and virtually appear in the House from their ridings. Mm -hmm. If that option is extended, these MPs would still have the ability to represent their constituents from their riding. They just wouldn't be able to come in and stand in the House of Commons in person. Yeah, and Rachel, interesting. How would that change the dynamic of what unfolds in Parliament? I mean, when everybody had to zoom in from home <laughs> to do the order of business, that was one thing. But now if there's a kind of a, a not a two-tiered structure, but it, it will certainly be, be different. Yeah, I, I think what is going to be really interesting is to see if the hybrid resumes and becomes a thing in this new parliament in that situation MPs could vote and and you know make their voices heard from mm -hmm. their writings but there is a lot of argument this was meant to be a temporary solution for the pandemic and not supposed to be the way that the house is run long term that if everyone is vaccinated we should be able to get back to business in person obviously there are other exemptions or other covid restrictions still in place mask mandates and things like that uh, so It'll be really fascinating to follow in the weeks ahead these conversations between the House leaders about whether or not that option to vote, because in a hybrid situation, you could vote from home. But if right. that is taken away and there still are a contingency of MPs who are uneligible to stand in the chamber, it could become a, a bigger question of their parliamentary rights and privileges uh, in order to be able to actually vote and participate, especially we're in another minority. Every vote counts yeah. in this dynamic. So in going forward, it's going to be kind of the open question. There's still a lot of how is this going to be administrated? You know, is it when we show our badges and passes and when we get into the Hill? Uh, worth noting as well, this applies to anyone exactly. getting into the House of Commons. So yeah. parliamentary press gallery, staff, any other officials who are up there for committee meetings, for example. So uh, it's early days, big news. I think mm -hmm. uh, we weren't necessarily anticipating that MPs would be included in the order coming down from the House, but they had a two-hour closed-door meeting today. I was sitting outside of it uh, waiting to hear what happened, and this news broke late tonight. Rachel Ayala, with the very latest, appreciate your insight. We'll